Hey everyone, welcome back to Pokemon Insurgents. I hope everybody is staying happy, healthy, and safe. On the last part, we ended up being transported into the Dream Realm, specifically our Dream Realm, and we've kind of been wandering around a little bit aimlessly. Apparently some person named Adam in Ibria City actually wants to see us, and we're gonna try to find him, hopefully. So, for starters, we actually want to explore the city that we're in currently, though, which is called Cerebium Town. Here in Cerebium Town, you will find a Chansey that'll heal you, and you'll find a Pokemart, which isn't much. But there's also a few other interesting things here. So, if we come up here into this house, we can actually find a PC, which is really, really useful. So, if you have a random Dragon-type Pokémon that you're willing to trade or kind of throw away, you might want to grab it right now. Because inside of this house right here, this strange man over here wants to trade. So, he wants a Dragon-type, and he tells us it's a risk that we should be willing to take. So, I'm going to go ahead and give him this Axew. And he's going to give us a Delta Yaw Mask. So let's take a look at that. It's kind of freaky. Delta Yaw Mask is a Steel Poison type. It's not exactly my favorite type combination in the world. I actually do think it's a really, really good typing, but it's more of an offensive typing, not really a defensive typing. And that's unfortunate because Kofagrigus is kind of a defensive Pokemon. This thing does actually have pretty good offensive coverage. I think it gets like fire type attacks, I think it gets earth power, and then obviously you have the typical steel stab, you have the typical poison stab, but it's not really an offensive powerhouse. Also, the other ability you could get for this would be Aftermath, which is probably a little bit better. I'm not really sure. So, that's the one trade in this town. There's also a lady down here, an ace trainer, if I can talk to her, and she wants to play a game. If we're willing to take her five question quiz, she'll give us a TM. So, I'm game. Alright, let's start. What was the name of the Eevee brother that had Vaporeon in the Battling Eevee Brothers? So this is actually from the Pokemon anime, and the answer would be Rainer. Which of these team leaders tried to catch a Victini in the Vezrin region? And that would be Zeus. So that would be from Zeta and Omicron. What level does Darkrai learn Dark Void? And that's actually 66. I'm assuming it's meant to be kind of a pun on 666. What did these Pokemon evolves at level 32? And the answer is actually going to be Grottle. And for the final question, which of these Pokemon is the easiest to catch due to its catch rate? And the answer is actually going to be Trapinch. So, for our troubles, we'll actually get the TM for Dark Pulse, which is probably a little bit better than the TM that we're going to be getting from the gym battle later on. So, with that said and done, we're going to move on into the Rim Ocean. I'm just going to go ahead and put up the encounters on the screen. There's actually a lot more of them. Not really surprising, but they will be in the grass over here. I. As I was saying before this man so rudely interrupted me, I also want to point out that there is a rock climb spot up here, and that we'll eventually be coming back here for that reason. But the one thing I do have to say about the Dream World is, or the Dream Realm, is that I appreciate the encounter list, because I think they're pretty fitting. Oh, there you are. You must be icy. I was, uh, sent to deliver a message. Adam, the gym leader here, wants to see you. He says you should know who he is. Just meet him in his, at his gym in Erebus City. Uh, that's all, I think. 
All right, that's pretty cool. So this is Erebus City. As usual, we have the Chansey and the Pokemart combination right here. There's actually not a whole lot of interest here in this town. And I'm pretty serious when I say that. And here we have a trainer right here that'll trade you anything. Or rather, you can trade him anything for a Dredagon. So that's pretty cool. I suppose if you wanted to, you could actually catch something in the wilds in Rim Ocean, trade for his Drudagon, and then trade the Drudagon for the Yamask. Over here, we have this guy who will give us some helpful items for our gym challenge. So he'll give us a bug gym and a fighting gym, and that should probably tell you what type of gym this is going to be. Up over here, we have an egg seller. And the egg is actually going to be a Magby, so that's cool. I also want to point out that in every house in this town, you can actually find a PC. So if you need to swap out your Pokemon for the gym, you can do so. Speaking of which, I'm actually going to do that myself. So Delta Yamask is pretty cool, but it's not going to help us here. I also want to point out that there is this guy right here. He's a huge fan of dark type moves. He took after Adam. And he could tutor us, but he'd rather wait until we have the badge. So that's unfortunate. So you know what? Let's go on in. Let's see just who this Adam is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look who it is. I see. You look different. I heard from the citizens of Pryon Town that you finally ended up here. I'm Adam, the leader here. I should introduce myself. You might be wondering why there's an actual full-on gym in the Dream Realm. Well, let's say I'm just as trapped here as you are. Persephone trapped me here a year ago. It was a brutal trap. I didn't see it coming. Now I hear Jarns taking over in my place. I have so much to tell you, but in private. I can promise you, I don't want to hear it. This is my gem. It's start type, the laser puzzle. I'm very fond of it. You're going to want an eighth badge anyways, so why don't you meet me at the back? That way we can uh, discuss the situation in private. Please, I promise you, this is important to me. I've got information you might need, and I might know how to get you out of this dream realm too, amongst other things. Meet me in the back room. All right, so that's easier said than done. So we have this mirror puzzle right here. All you have to do is talk to the mirrors and you can essentially say yes to them infinitely until they're in the proper place that you want them to be in. So the first two puzzles are going to be very, very easy, especially this one. So I just want to rotate them there. Also heads up, once you rotate them into the final position to complete the puzzle, you might want to X out of the menu for turning the mirrors. You don't really want to bug the game here. So this one is a little bit more complicated here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the mirrors like this. And this over here. And we're good to go. So this is the final room and this is Probably the one that gives people the most trouble right here. Thankfully, however, this is also the room that you don't have to battle any of the trainers at all. Like before, you had spinners, they might catch you in their sights and you might have to battle them, but it's pretty easy to avoid these. I really, really dislike this final room, honestly. It's such a convoluted puzzle. Then again, light puzzles usually are, so that's kind of unfortunate. 
So we want to take the light all the way down over here. And we want to sort of get it into the corner right over here. Then we want to make sure to send it across to the right. Send it up over here. Light puzzles tend to be about making sure that the light reaches a certain position. And this one really isn't any different. Our end goal is going to be all the way up over here. So if I can turn this light like this, and we should be done. So I'm going to go ahead and save before we talk to Adam, even though he has a lot to say. Also, my apologies, my throat is kind of sore, so the reading might be a little bit rough. Well, dang, I see. You really do look older. Listen. What do you know about the first auger? Not much, eh? I guess nobody does anymore, with all that jarn done to censor my name out. That's right. My name. I am. Er, was. The first auger. I'm not dead. Although being stuck in here, I might as well be. I guess it's story time, isn't it? This was a few years ago, back when the Torn region was a complete mess. Despite that, life was amazing for me. I was happy, had a family, I was a gym leader. I was even chosen by Hoopa, a legendary Pokemon. Because of it, I grew arrogant. I thought that somehow I alone could solve the problems in Torin. So when I saw one of the most respected trainers of all time, I messed up. Turns out, she's part of some group of legendary, incredible trainers. They had seen the problems that I had, and I talked them into making a huge mistake. I finally found you. You guys were chosen by Arceus to guard the, you know, strongest trainers throughout all of history. The Timeless. I'm such a huge fan, Steven, Cynthia, I... Really, Sin? This is the one you want to trust with the crystal? If Arceus finds... He's more strong-hearted than he seems, Steven. I'm sure he'll make a worthy ally. You better be right about this. Adam, you know why you're here, right? I... yes. All the cults. All the chaos in the region. I can't stop it alone. I need your help. And how, pray tell, did you learn of our group? I was on Route 2, and I saw Cynthia in action. You what? Cynthia, for... She was hidden, but I saw her Lucario Mega Evolve in order to protect a baby Riolu. Pokemon can't Mega Evolve on their own. I knew there was something fishy going on, and I found her hiding in a nearby cave. She wasn't going to say anything, but when she noticed I had Hoopa, she mentioned this. This whole thing. Cynthia, we've talked about this. You have to be more careful. Hoopa's chosen him, Steven. He's trustworthy. I know it. We put it to a vote. Unfortunately, the side that was for you barring the crystal was nearly unanimous. But Adam, you need to listen carefully. Even we don't know what the crystal is for. All we know is that Arceus wants it guarded. And if Arceus wants it guarded, then it's clearly very important. He 
people have tried to steal it before. And you cannot let that happen. You don't mean those weirdo Giratina look-alike cultists. You're no threat. Not with that crystal by my side. They're not cultist. They're something else. I'm not entirely sure. Fortunately, they can't just steal it from you. They need to defeat you first. My group has decided to lend you this crystal against my council to help you deal with that huge cult problem that Torin has. But you have to return it. You cannot keep it. You cannot let it fall into the hands of Giratina's group. You cannot lose to them. Do you understand? You cannot lose. I understand. I won't let you get down, guys. I won't lose. I lost. I bit off more than I could chew. I thought I was undefeatable, and in a way, I kind of was. With Arceus's ancient crystal, I couldn't die or be defeated. But I learned a very important lesson that day. Never go up against somebody smarter than you. Because even invulnerability has a loophole. It was clever, I admit it. Exactly one year ago, Persephone and Jarn had the bright idea of using my family against me. To protect my son, I had to stop fighting. But even then, even with my not fighting back, I was still invulnerable. This was the first time that Persephone met Darkrai. She convinced it to steal me away in the dreams of my son. And then her Jingar used to dream eater. Luckily, I was able to contact my partner, Hoopa, who was still in the real world. I had it send Mew to rescue you, and I woke you up and guided you out. I've been watching your quest. Already, you're doing so much better than I am. You've already defeated Audrey and Zenith. You're the hero of this story, not me. And it's up to you to reunite this crystal return it to its guardians and stop this Giratina group. They've been manipulating us since forever. I'm not sure why exactly, but they want that crystal. That entire prophecy business? That fake prophet you met again in the Infernal base? Whatever mind abilities Zenith had? It all ties back to them. I just wish I knew more about them. I see. The only way out of the Dream Realm is with the legendary Pokemon. Hoopa could have gotten me out. I was sent here without it. Darkrai's probably forgotten about me. But you have Mew. And with an 8th badge, you'll be able to transform to copy Hoopa's ability, Hyperspace Hole. You can get out of here. To get to that badge, you'll have to win it fair and square. I know it's a lot to take in, and I'm sorry for that. It's not easy to tell you all of this. I wish I could have softened it. But you have a world to save. We don't have time. This is a battle that needs to happen. It's time to begin. I hope you're ready. Father against son. This is the battle of the century. So we're actually going to be battling Adam, who turned out to be our own father, and I didn't heal up. I'm actually going to reset and be right back. Alright, so I'm back. I have a fully healed up Arcanine, and we're going to put in some work here. So starting off here, he has the Greninja, 
has protein for an ability, has the focus sash for an item, has toxic spikes, spikes, taunt, and shadow sneak. This was actually a pretty popular set in Ubers for Engine 6 for Greninja. It was kind of a suicide lead. Fortunately, because of our partial normal typing, we're actually immune to Shadow Sneak. So I can just boost up to max attack, and then I can smack this with an extreme speed. And I think he actually wastes a full restore on this as well. After this, he is going to go ahead and use Tyranitar right here. It actually has a nerve instead of and stream, which is kind of fitting. As a choice scarf, a superpower, crunch, stone edge, ice punch. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use outrage right here. And he's actually going to use a max revive, which is pretty unique for a NPC. So the Drapion right here has keen eye print ability, has a choice scarf for a held item and it has Poison Jab, Knock Off, Earthquake, and Ice Vein. So you saw right there. It hit us with a Poison Jab. He's about to send in Hydreigon. Hydreigon is going to be his Mega, has Levitate for an ability, but it has the Hydreigonite, which will transform its ability into something called Lernian. I'll talk about that in a second. It also has Dark Pulse, Fire Blast, Dragon Pulse, and Roost. So Lernian is a really, really, really weird ability. Essentially, as Hydreigon's HP decreases from 80 to 60 to 40 to 20, it will gain multiple heads as it as its HP hits those thresholds. So restoring HP won't actually remove the heads, but you can't activate the ability again to get more heads at those thresholds. So there is a limit, and what these heads do is the more heads there are, the more hits there are to each attack. Basically, if there's, say, three heads, an attack's base power is kind of spread out among those heads. Hopefully that makes sense. Also because this, each attack kind of comes out a little bit stronger, for example, at six heads, you will have six hits of damage, and if there was, say, like a 60 base move, base power move used, it would come out to something like 73 base power. So again, hopefully that gives you an idea of what the damage increase is. It's pretty crazy. So regardless, I have extreme speed on my Arcanine right here. And I had the Lumberry to cure my confusion. Or I did. Maybe I used it up, or maybe it got knocked off, I'm not sure. Alright, that's fine. I guess we'll have to fight Mega with Mega. So I'll go ahead and send in my Bisharp right here. I'll go ahead and Mega Evolve, and we'll go for a Drain Punch. I'm pretty sure I can tank any hit that this thing wants to throw it at me. And also, as you see right here, its HP went down a lot, and you can see all the heads on its sprite, which is actually pretty cool. So you can see the ability, or the attack, in fact, right there. That's a lot of damage, and that was 8 hits as well. It's actually absolutely insane. So next up, he wants to send in Bisharp. That's kind of scary. But I think I'm going to stay in. And I think I'll go for a bulk up since he'll probably go for the Sucker Punch right there. And hopefully I can actually tank a Sucker Punch now. Very, very nice. So the Bisharp right there had Defiant, it had the Black Glasses, it had Knock Off, Sword Stance, Iron Head, and Sucker Punch. So this was actually another reason why I wanted to use Delta Bisharp around this time in the game. Next up we have the Spear Tomb, it has Noctum, which sets the new moon field. It has a Dark Rock, 
as Will-O-Wisp, Sucker Punch, Shadow Sneak, and Knock Off. So unfortunately, half of my kit is useless against this, but I can hit it with an Aerial Ace and almost knock it out. So he can full restore up if he wants to, but we should be able to hopefully knock out this Spirit Tomb or get pretty close. Yeah, it's gonna knock us out. That's kind of unfortunate. I think I could have actually set up a little bit more on the Bisharp, but that's fine because we have Miss Magius right here. This has Magic Guard, so I'm not actually affected by the hazards, and I can just go ahead and hit this with a Moon Blast. This is actually pretty nice because I can show off Miss Magius a little bit. And then, of course, we have Greninja coming in here. So Greninja can't really do anything to me, like at worst it could just hit me with Shadow Sneak. So I guess I'll just go for Moonblast, even though Moonblast is kind of weak in the new moon field. Alright, that's fine. I'll actually go for another Moonblast and hopefully we can finish this. Alright, there we go. That was kind of a messy battle. Also, I want to point out something while Adam's sprite is on the screen. His sprite actually depends on which character you picked in the beginning of the game. So he could have been blonde, he could have had brown hair, it really depends on which character or which hairstyle that you picked at the start. Amazing. You surpassed me, I see. Congratulations! You deserve this more than anyone I know. And please, take this as well. Dark Manor is a powerful move, but its user will need to recharge the next turn. And you'll need this. Listen, behind my gym, there is a small cave with an insignia on the wall. These are the insignias marking closed portals. Koopa can use these to travel from place to place. You can use that to get back to the real world. Listen, I see. As much as I want to talk to you, well, you need to get going. We have so much to discuss, but we'll need to save it for another time. Time passes differently in the dream realm. Who knows what you could have missed. You need to get the rest of the shards of that crystal. You can't let those Giratina creeps get what they want. Hurry. And good luck. Alright. So, he has given us our mission right here. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the gym. It's actually kind of laggy in here. But thankfully we can just leave like this. There's a few things that we can do now that we have his badge. I mean, obviously, we can go ahead and go back here and leave, but there's also this tutor right here. So, because we have the badge, the tutor will now teach us different moves. So, all these are really, really good. In general, dark type moves are pretty good. We have Knock Off, Foul Play, Booker Punch, and Nasty Plot. So, all these are fantastic. I really like Sucker Punch mainly because we actually got the Bishar Bite here in the Dream Realm. And there's only two ways of getting Sucker Punch on Bishar. You can either do it via Egg Move, or you could use this Move Tutor right here, which is much, much easier. So with that, we're going to go ahead and go back here into this cave. Use our Quartz Glute right here and use Hyperspace Hole. And as you see here, it creates the portal. Unfortunately, this is going to be a one-way trip. And as soon as we're out of there, we'll have our phone ring. Oh, actually, I think it's the Pokenav. 
Hey, I see. Are you there? I was on my way to Gaia Town, like we talked about. I ran into something. The Augur is here in Anthotrite City, and he's battling what looks like a... Giratina cultist. There aren't any cults for Giratina, as far as I know. I need you to come quick. I don't know what's happening. So, we're going to find us all the way up over here at a waterfall on Route 5, which is pretty cool. So we should probably head to Amphitrite City and check things out, but we're going to do that on the next part. So until then, thank you all so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, hope this helps, and I will most definitely catch you all on the next one. Peace.